up, y'all? I got something new in the mail. I got these two. I'm going to switch out my stock blade on my protege. This is the hitter for well, protege, right? I'm going to switch this out and put this one on there. So this is equipped with the, the one blade, I believe, as well. Different packaging. So the one blade is the moving blade. And the fixed blade, this is a gold titanium. And of course, this I will switch out on one of my other trimmers. I don't know, stay tuned for that. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this out. Try it on my next person that's coming in and let me know how you think about it in the comment section. One side is a little bit higher than the other. I'm gonna let these run anyway. I'm gonna rock out just like this. Put them straight out of the pack without having to do any adjusting or zero gapping. I'll probably find myself ending up having to zero gap these to be honest though. I'm gonna move that back because that looks a little dangerous. I don't think y'all can see that, but uh, you can see that. Move closer. This side is a little higher than this side, this sharp. Part right here just bit the mess out of my arm. Move that back a little bit. zero gap you got these small little screws right here you just push those open and loosen them just a little bit but in this case what I'm doing is only loosening the right screw which when flipped this way it's the left side of the blade so I'm just unscrewing that a little bit and pushing down on this side holding it right there and tightening it. It's kind of one of my small tricks. I'll probably do another zero gapping video so I can get in more in depth on how to properly zero gap. I've done zero gapping videos before, but I don't think I've really broken it down exactly what you're supposed to do, what side you're supposed to hold down, how to tighten these up because you gotta tighten up one side first, then you tighten up the other. But boom. Have a razor blade ready to go. This thing's going to make some magic happen. So it's tight. Fix this on here. I got to hurry up because I think my guy's here. So run these. But stay tuned, y'all. Mm -hmm. 
okay now that we got all that good old zero gapping and adjusting stuff out of the way you see the blade is ready to go this thing is nice and tight i'm going to show you some of the haircuts that i have been working on over the last two months learning this blade perfecting how it cuts this thing is probably my favorite blade right now i must really admit that the one blade is something I've heard about for some time now, maybe end of last year, we're talking 2022. And all year long, all 2023, all I've been hearing about is the one blade, the one blade, you gotta do the one blade, you gotta get the one blade. I finally got a one blade on my trimmer and it has transformed the protege to a straight razor. This thing is butter. I mean, you don't have to fight anything. You don't have to go over and over on the same spot. I mean, for someone like me who is a perfectionist, when it comes to the lineup, I definitely take my time. And as you can see, I'm playing this in real time just so you can kind of get an idea of how great this blade can be, how efficient it is, how smooth everything that is in front of it. It attacks it. It gets it out of the way. And this is one of my regular guys. He comes through a lot. We're talking weekly, you know, um, but it's cutting like butter. Mind you, just a FYI, for those of you who are wondering what I spray at the beginning of the video was water on his front lineup. It's just one of my tricks that I do. I never really try to use holding sprays unless it's a must, depending on the hair texture. But I'm not a big fan of it just because it's very very messy sometimes especially depending on the brand that you're using but anyway i'm not gonna bore you with a lot of the same things that i say in a lot of my videos i know i've been droughting everyone that's been in tune for some time now but i wanted to just come back and give you this update on the protege trimmer which if you have a protege trimmer and you have the stock blade on there you're definitely doing just fine with it. But if you want to elevate your trimmer's performance, you can get the one blade. This thing goes on mostly all of, all the Stylecraft line, I believe, as well as the Gamma trimmers. So definitely get you one of these. It goes anywhere for about 30 to $40, if I'm not mistaken. Yo, this thing is definitely worth the money. Don't shortchange yourself by not having multiple different tools in your arsenal. Get as many as you can. You don't need just that one to do services. You need multiple different things. If somebody told you otherwise, that is a lie. But as you can see, this one blade cuts through anything. Doesn't matter what texture, if they're coarse, medium, fine, straight, whatever you want to call it. You know, A, A, A1, 1A, 2A, BC, 4C, whatever you label, whatever texture you want to on this thing, it will definitely cut. You don't have to worry about any of that anymore. I believe this is the blade that everyone needs in their arsenal. If you haven't gotten one yet, go to the direct website for Stylecraft and use my discount code JEXQUISITE for a good old discount. I got you covered on that. I'll leave that in the description below of this video. Or you can go to my main page on the home page. You will see the discount code posted or listed on there. Just a FYI, get that discount. And I'm not just trying to upsell or sell this particular blade. I'm just saying, if you want to move fast, and I'm not talking fast as in rush jobs. I'm trying to tell you to add one of these in your arsenal, two even get you the one blade you need this asap i'm serious if you don't have this you won't be moving efficient you won't be moving with confidence as you go through the haircut you want to produce quality in a timely manner not rush jobs you want to take your time but move people out with quality work not garbage not horrible work we all know horrible work when we see it. Then we also know when you're taking too long in a service. Then there's also taking your time to produce the quality. There's a lot of differences between these things. 
You know what I'm saying? Also, just a quick heads up. When you do get this blade, be aware that when you use it on the face, it may be a little too sharp for some people, depending on their skin type. It will definitely leave a little bit of some, I guess, a uh, little, it'll be some bites. So, you know, they may well, depending on how hard you press down. So you make sure that when you lay the blade down, you cut hair only and not skin. I definitely suggest a different blade for the face until you understand and learn how this one blade hits. I've been using this thing for two months, like I say, and I've been mastering how to go about using this blade. And this is the first person that I used this blade on, actually. But using it on them showed me a whole lot as I moved on to other clients, whether it was a kid, an older gentleman, the ladies or something like that. You know, it's always different with everyone. So it was a blast, actually using this for the first time and i was uh talking his ear off about how excited i was and talking to him about many other things but as you can see i did notice that it may well tell him if i i use the one blade on his face so i switched over to my other trimmer which is my gamma plus hitter i didn't really want to do anything crazy i mean you don't want to have people leaving welted. There's some people you can't help but have them welt because they're just going to react to the blade regardless to how light and sensitive and how light handed you are is what I'm trying to say. So be mindful of that. Um, as you can see with the bottom line on his mustache, the one blade is perfect for that. As far as ab the above line, I don't really recommend it. You can definitely be the judge for yourself. This thing won't react the same to everybody, but I want you to be very mindful that you don't have to use this blade on all the areas of the face or haircut. This is a prime example of why you need other types of tools. Real quick, I'll move on to a different hair texture just to show you how efficient this thing is, how precise it is. I'm talking about if you don't have this thing in your cart right now, you're not on the website. Go to Stylecraft right now and get this blade ASAP. Like, look at that. Butter. This is perfect. Those corners, perfect. If you're not hearing me, what I'm saying is those corners on these blades are aligned so perfect that. That's all you literally have to use. You never really have to use the middle of the blade, but the corners. And I usually call that the rocking seesaw effect. And it's something that I will demonstrate in another video because I did do that in a video before where I got a lot of just negative feedback from a teachable moment, which I was using the ES4 blade. That's a blade from Eversense, which was a collaboration with Gamma, but I will save that for a whole nother video because I got pooped on with the IG video that I posted and it was just terrible. You could definitely look through my shorts. I did bring out another video of that same clip, breaking down why I never did a voiceover then why I decided to do a voiceover after the negative feedback because I just wanted to have people understand that that was a teaching moment. Kind of like right here where I'm using the corners of the blade, making sure I get the vertical bar perfect, get the C cup perfect. But people do not understand when they don't cut hair regularly that there's a lot of manipulating in how you hold the blade or the trimmer itself in hand, how you use the cheekbone, the temple area, index finger, middle finger, your thumb, your pinky to balance everything so that you make sure your hand is moving fluid through the line to where you're not stiff. You're not making a horrible job happen because this is very common. You will see a very unsymmetrical haircut lineup done where 
people just don't see that they're making a whole flaw happen. But these are like rookie mistakes, which I can make rookie mistakes at times. And a majority of the time you blame the client. Usually the barber gets blamed, but us barbers have to deal with people that move a lot. Adults, not just kids, but adults. They they sit in the chair wrong. They act as if they're not getting a service. They want to be on their phone the whole time. You can put your phone away for a half hour to an hour. It's okay. Get your hair cut. It's not an emergency. Whenever you pick that phone up, you're just looking at notifications a majority of the time. It's so disrespectful for people that sit down and stay on their phone the whole time. You can talk for a half hour. You can talk for about 15 minutes or however long the service takes. It's all right to have that human interaction. But I'm bringing up people that move in particular, for example, with my little man in the chair right now. He's doing well, but he definitely has his moments. As you can see, he's always happy about his haircut. There's times, you know, he's trying to look at the mirror right now. There's times where he is just a straight goof. He is off the chain with it. And I do have a full video that I will post of me lining him up in this particular clip. I may leave the audio playing just to show the interaction of me and him going back and forth. And just the small little moments where he would kind of just go off the rails, you know. But I may not leave the audio due to the fact that there may be a copyright in it. But definitely, if I can, I will let the audio play. Just so you can kind of get a taste for those of you who have a struggle or a hard time servicing younger kids. This is a perfect prime example, but as you can see, this one blade works just fine on him. There was no complaints from him. He does tease or play around a lot at times where he will say, ouch, ouch, ouch. And if vet barbers or veteran barbers that are seasoned, I guess, know exactly what I'm talking about. Even the you know new newcomers as in beginner barbers you know that kids will give you hell they will give you a time they will try you kids are going to be kids but definitely this thing is butter precise as it can get i mean there's no fight at all where wherever i set this blade down on whether it's around the ear the temple front forehead line vertical bar it is cutting it is removing everything but i'm gonna move on from my little homie because i will use this video again i'll show you the full service and yeah don't worry i got you covered but yeah here goes a different texture this one's definitely a more curly texture but still almost a tight curl and some areas straight but he has a very great lineup to work on because when done right and executed completed it looks amazing when you first start out it's not that fun of a process because he definitely has a colic in the front which i will use a video with him one day to show you how to work around a colic and how to Make sure that everything is easy the next time you deal with a colic. So I'll, I'll show you all the steps is what I'm trying to say. I'll make sure you get detailed breakdowns of how to go about it. And you will be executing crispy, proper, symmetrical lines, regardless to having to deal with a colic. I do have one video that will be coming out with a different kind of texture that has a colic in the front. Don't worry, I got you covered. But as usual, as you can hear me going, getting off topic, I need to digress back to what we were talking about, which is the one blade. This thing is money. It works perfect on beards with his texture. His skin can handle this blade on the face. Like I said earlier, be careful when you're using this blade on the face. You have to learn how this thing works first. You have to study blades. You have to master blades or else you will be having people all cut up and bruised. 
from you pressing down too hard with the heavy hand. You can't be doing that. Okay. But as you can see, I'm getting his beard tight. We have a taper shadow type beard going on or a taper going into a more full length. And he's very particular about how he gets his beard done, you know, but with the one blade it's challenge accepted all day. Bring it on. Whatever it is, bring it on. This thing's literally like a pencil or a pen. You know, you, you, you're literally painting on people with a trimmer. That's crazy. I haven't experienced anything like this blade before other than, let's see. Um, I will say the blade that comes on the Rebel is similar, but it has a different cut. If you know, you know, if you've tried that blade out, it, it's, it's, a, it's a completely different cut. It's fresh for sure, but it is not the one blade. That's one thing I do love about trimmer blades is you're going to tell what each blade does when you're learning them. Because there's this big conversation where people talk about you can use one trimmer only for everything. You don't need that many trimmers. Yes, you do. You need a lot of different style blades and a lot of trimmers. It's just the way of the trade, like I say, to begin with earlier in the video. Anyway, if you found this video helpful, are you going to buy the one blade? If you like the one blade, if you've been using the one blade, leave a comment. Share this video if you know anybody that may find this informative. And please follow me on all my different platforms. I'll catch y'all on the next one.